Blessed be my loves, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this online coven. So for those who are new and perhaps stumbled across me on the big wide world of YouTube, my name is Bethany and I am the Yogi Witch and yeah, thank you for joining me today for this brand new vlog, video, whatever you want to call it. I'm not quite up to date with all of the modern terms for YouTube. So in today's video, I'm just going to go through five of my top tips for when you are starting a witchcraft practice. So a lot of the times I get messages on YouTube or over on my Instagram at the Yogi Witch about how to start a whiff. <laughs> I don't know what word that was. <laughs> about how to start a witchcraft journey. So I have compiled together my five rules and my advice from my own personal experiences regarding a witchcraft journey. So these aren't in any particular order, these are just my personal opinions and things I've learned from you know, mistakes I've made or maybe triumphs of mine, etc, etc. So just a little reminder that I do upload three videos a week, including yoga flows, uh, spells and vlogs. So if you want to give this video a like, comment, subscribe, I would very much appreciate the help. But yeah, grab yourself a snack, grab yourself a cup of tea, maybe grab yourself a notebook to listen to my pearls of wisdom. But when you are ready, I will meet you back here in just a moment so we can discuss my five top tips for starting a witchcraft practice. All right, so just a reminder before we begin discussing my top tips that these aren't in any particular order. They're not in order of importance. They're just how the thoughts came into my mind, how I wrote them down and how I semi-planned to talk on this vlog. Okay, the first rule I have is in regards to spending a lot of money on tools you don't need. So when you first start a witchcraft practice, it kind of be blinding to go into maybe Etsy or local businesses in your area or Amazon, etc., and buying everything that says perhaps witchcraft on it or says it's used for certain things, uh, crystals, candles, all these expensive items you really don't need. A beautiful way to keep the cost down and to, you know, kind of keep an eye on your environmental impact, obviously, is to buy things secondhand or to reuse things in your own home. So for example, a lot of witchcraft practice I do is revolving uh, spell jars just because it calls out to me and I like the tidiness of it. <laughs> so you can reuse jars that perhaps that have had sauces in them or puddings or anything like that that maybe you've used in your home for kitchenware or whatever and you've washed and reused them, taken off the label, etc. This works just as well as going out and buying a brand new fancy glass jar. I honestly to God, this is it's the exact same. Uh, the same comes with candles. You don't need to buy expensive ones. You can buy cheaper ones or, you know, crystals. Don't buy every crystal that's out there. I know they're beautiful. I know they're beautiful, but maybe kind of hold off until you know specifically what kind of crystal you're looking for, etc. It's kind of the same with a yoga mat. You don't need to spend a lot of money to have a yoga mat or to start a journey. Buying a yoga mat doesn't make you a yogi, just the same as buying every crystal out there doesn't make you a witch. You don't need to save the money. And when you are starting your witchcraft practice, your kind of likes and dislikes change a lot. So there's no point spending all your money on, I don't know, 100 packs of tarot cards, and then eventually after two weeks you realize you don't actually quite like tarot. It's a waste of money, there is no point. Save yourself the dollar and hold off. Reuse things around your house and one, help the environment, two, save money, and three, allows you to keep open-minded onto what you'd like to explore. So the most important thing of any spell or any kind of magical work is your intention and the mindset you're bringing to it, and that is free. Obviously, that is the most important thing over any expensive tool. You can buy the most expensive crystal in the world, but it is gonna do jack nothing. I was gonna swear then. It's gonna do jack nothing on your spell if your intention is not in the right place. So my advice is to work on your intention, explore your practice, and then start investing into tools you'd like for your witchcraft practice. That is my best advice. This is what I've learned from my own practice and from spending all my money on things that I actually don't need and ended up giving away to my other friends who are interested in this kind of stuff. Okay, so this kind of follows on to number two, which is to be true to your beliefs. So, Kind of like if you buy every expensive tool, you're kind of forcing yourself down a road and 
you know, we can get caught up in social media or perhaps what we deem a witch to be or what we deem a spiritual practice to be, etc. And we can force ourselves to go down that road. I did that in the, maybe a year into my witchcraft practice, I convinced myself that this is what everyone was doing on social media, this is what everyone was doing on YouTube, so this is what I should believe. And forced myself to go down a route that really didn't make me happy, didn't bring me joy, and I saw no results because my intention wasn't in the right place because I wasn't enjoying it and the universe knew. So, you know, the, I would really recommend keeping open-minded about things and being very honest with yourself. So a great way to kind of track your witchcraft practice is to keep a journal and to write things down and to write down stuff that maybe or spell work or attention, uh, attention setting, etc., that really resonate with you and be honest. No one is keeping an eye on your witchcraft practice. <laughs> that was bad. No one is, you know, keeping an eye and telling you that this is what the rules are. This is a personal practice and this should be something that, you know, brings you joy. So there's no point forcing yourself down a road that you don't like. It's kind of like in yoga. If you're forcing that body into a pose it doesn't want to go to, you're ignoring its boundaries, you are going to end up hurt or injured. And it's kind of the same with witchcraft practice. Maybe not the maybe not the part that you're gonna get injured on, I'd like to think, but maybe something that would end up hurting you, especially if you're going into a spell work or you know a ritual with really bad intentions and really bind bad mindset. So, you know, second advice is to really be honest about your journey. The third rule is to be open-minded. Now, I really, really do stress this one. There is a lot of different practices in witchcraft and in Wicca. There is a lot of routes you can go down to. You don't have to be have a religious practice or a religious belief in terms of witchcraft. I don't personally have a religious belief in terms of witchcraft, but I do have a witchcraft practice. And it is two very different things. I don't necessarily worship any uh, gods or goddesses, etc. But I do have beliefs in the universe, in perhaps a, you know, a bigger being. I want to use that kind of term than perhaps what we think it, are, it is, but I don't wouldn't necessarily call it a god. That's just my personal practice. And. You know, same as rule two, you can kind of force yourself down a route to believe in God and goddesses, but if they don't resonate with you, then there's no point forcing yourself to do it. Um, I would really recommend doing your research on witchcraft and seeing maybe what, you know, what calls out to you. So when I first started, I was very interested in crystals and, you know, I still do love crystals, but that's not really what I focus my my practice on. I am much more an eclectic witch, so I like to pick up things that suit me. I really, you know, obviously resonate with the lunar phases. If you've ever done my online courses or perhaps my lunar flows, I really do resonate with um, the moon phases and I really do resonate with the elements. I, I think much more nature-based magic practitioner than perhaps I am in terms of kitchen witchery or, you know, cosmic witchery. But I really recommend following or doing your research, sorry, on the different kind of styles of witchcraft. And maybe as you look down the list, you start to see what it is that you are doing already, whether it be worshiping the moon or whether you're really in tune with nature or whether you love to heal and help people through food. So in the description box below, there is going to be like a little article where you can kind of take a little brief summary of you know, the different witches that are out there. I didn't write this obviously, but it is something that is quite useful and something that I found uh, when researching for this vlog. So keep yourselves open-minded, keep exploring all paths and don't shut yourself off to everything. Okay, rule number four, do not label yourself. Don't know why I need to smack my lap, but I'm serious. You don't have to call yourself a witch straight off. I really resonate with the word witch. I did my, uh, both my undergraduate and my masters focused on witchcraft and I do love the term. I like the reclaiming of the term in, in modern day and I am a, and I respect the history that's behind the term. You know, obviously as part of my degree, I spent a lot of time focusing on the atrocities that happened when we women were deemed witches, even though they were healers, etc. So, 
I resonated with that word when I first started and I would call myself a witch. Obviously, you've seen what I've called myself, the yogi witch. But I really do like it, whereas I have friends who don't call themselves witches. And that is fair, I have no judgement on it. I think everyone should be able to label themselves whatever it is they want to. You don't even have to label yourself. Call yourself whatever you want. It's a free world, call yourself whatever you want. If you don't want to be called a witch, don't call yourself a witch. Don't call yourself anything. Keep it completely personal and private. If you want to call yourself a witch, call yourself a witch and don't take anybody else's judgments or opinions about it. I couldn't give a flying duck about what people say about me. When I first started, I did call myself the witch when I changed my Instagram to the yogi witch. I did get a little bit of backlash and you know, when I would go out um, to kind of maybe social events, social events, to social things, uh, maybe with a group of friends or people I knew, etc. I did get people commenting on it and it made me very uncomfortable. And I got to a point where I was like, meh, you can call yourself whatever you want to call yourself so I can call myself whatever I want to call myself. So when you are starting a witchcraft practice, don't label yourself straight away. It's kind of the same as, you know, the third rule about being open-minded and exploring. And I think you should be that in terms of what you like to call yourself. And, you know, until you feel comfortable, maybe don't call yourself a witch, maybe just explore it. But if you feel it passionate about it, you know, do it. It's kind of the same in yoga when people call themselves yogis. There's a lot of controversy around whether or not you should be called a yogi or a guru, etc. And I am very much of the opinion that, you know, we only have one life. It's our life. We can make the decisions that we want to make it as long as it doesn't cause any harm to others and we are kind and you know, compassionate people, then I think you should be able to say and do what you want, believe what you want again, as long as it harms no others. And I think this is the same when it comes to witchcraft. So it's very complicated. It is complicated, but I think when you start off, maybe hold back from blaming yourself straight away. Maybe it might take a few years until you'd like to call yourself anything, you know, like a witch or whatever. But I think I've really complicated that answer. I should have really thought about it, but I'm gonna stand by it. Don't label yourself, label yourself, do what you want, but don't force yourself to call yourself a witch. If it makes you uncomfortable, you don't have to call yourself a witch. It is your life. I'm gonna end this question now because I'm just ranting. <laughs>
to keep track of your journey via a journal or, you know, writing things down, maybe even vlogging just for yourself or whatever. You know, speak to like-minded people, you know, maybe on Instagram or YouTube, you know, if you ever want to ask questions, please send me a message below or over on my Instagram at The Yogi Witch. I'm happy to answer anything. I'm happy to give my advice and to maybe point you in directions of really great books or other YouTubers that are, are open and willing to talk about it, etc. So these, it is a really simple vlog about my five tips for witchcraft. It wasn't meant to be long, it wasn't meant to be boring. I know I ranted a little bit, but it really was just kind of meant, meant to, you know, be my personal experience about, you know, my personal tips and, you know, recommendations for starting witchcraft practice. I often get a lot of messages on YouTube and over on my Instagram about witchcraft and, you know, people are nervous to say anything and they do ask a lot of questions and there is a lot of a lot involved in it. I have another video, I'll link below in the description box obviously, uh, about my witchcraft journey so far, which you can watch, which I filmed, um, I don't know, maybe six months ago, seven months ago, uh, about my witchcraft journey, and I will give another one of an update. But these are just my tips on how you can get started. I'm hoping to bring a, a little bit more, so maybe recommendations of books or etc. but in the description box below, there are recommendations on articles, other YouTubers, um, my vlog, and books that I read that kind of helped me get started. This is just gonna be a super basic, here's my advice for starting a witchcraft practice. Yeah, one of these days I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get this vlogging thing down. <laughs> Oh God, let me get it down. But yeah, thank you for watching. I know it was short, I know it was simple, but I really hope it gave you maybe a bit of confidence to start a witchcraft practice, maybe a little bit of confidence of the do's and don'ts, etc. Again, I'm hoping to bring more vlogs to it so you can comment below, send me a message about what you would like to see in terms of witchcraft, maybe in terms of spells, vlogs, advice, etc. But another reminder, I do upload three videos a week, so I would always appreciate uh, a bit of support for the coven, so a like, maybe a subscribe, anything at all. But thanking you so much, my darlings, for joining me here, for listening to me talk. I hope it didn't bore you. And I look forward to seeing you again soon, my loves. Blessed be.